to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. The book, book of 1 Thessalonians, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, book of 1 Thessalonians 4, and verses 13 through 18. I had two sermons ready. I've got, I have two sermons ready. I'm not going to preach both of them. Somebody shout amen. amen. Both of them come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Both talk about the rapture. But tonight I want to preach the more simpler of the two. In 1 in Thessalonians chapter 4, and begin in verse 13. You know, the thing is, we have to be reminded that, there's, that the rapture could ha take place at any time. And that we must be ready. Amen. And uh, beginning in verse 13, Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, or unlearned, or I want you to understand this. Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. When he says, as others who have no hope, he's talking about the unsaved. He's talking about the unchurched. He's talking about the unbeliever. He says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. How many believe that? Amen. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Hallelujah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. This did not come by the word of man. He said, but we tell you this by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We've got a meeting that we're about to go to. Amen. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Talking to you tonight about the rapture of the church. Let's pray together. Father, as we come to you in prayer tonight, I pray that you would help me, God, to deliver your word in the way that you'd have it to be delivered tonight. I pray that you'd give me recall, God, of the things that I've studied. I pray, oh God, that you'd give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church tonight. Lord, help us all to be sensitive, God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we'd be strengthened. I pray that we would be encouraged. I pray that we would draw closer to you, God, throughout this service this evening. I pray, God, that, the, that this message, God, as we, look, as we look and expect the rapture of the church to occur at any time, I pray, God, that we would become more evangelistic. Lord, that we'd become more concerned about those who are not ready. And that we'll do all that we can to get them ready. Father, I praise you tonight for what you're about to do in this service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You might be seated if you can tonight. Glory to God. One of the things I like to preach on, I like to preach about the rapture. Amen. Now, the rapture is a very real thing. The rapture is in Scripture. And uh, no, the word rapture, some folks will... Uh, you know, get sensitive about this when you begin to preach about the rapture and they'll say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. And they are correct. The word rapture does not appear in the New Testament. But something else does appear in the New Testament and that is we shall be caught up. And the phrase, those two words, caught up, is taken from a word that you can, where we get the English word rapture from. And so for the, for the purpose of this message tonight, you'll hear me probably interchange those. I'll talk about the rapture, and I'll talk about getting caught up. Amen? You know, if we're not careful, we get caught up in something that's not good for us. We, talk, we say, oh, so-and-so, they got caught up. They're really, they really caught up in this, or they're caught up in that. I'm looking forward to getting caught up to meet Jesus in the air, aren't you? Hallelujah. You know, Satan does not want us to believe in a rapture. The, word, uh, the term rapture is under attack tonight. I've, I've, read, I've got a hold of books that tried to argue that there's not going to be a rapture. And I've come to declare to you tonight, the devil does not want us to believe that there's going to be a rapture. Because if we, don't, if we do not believe in a rapture, if we do not believe that the Lord could come at any moment, then we tend to get loose with our living. We tend to get careless with our Christian walk. We tend to come, become less and less concerned about those who are not ready. But Jesus made it clear that there's going to be a catching away. Somebody check the air for me, if you will. Make sure it's still way down so we can cool off in here. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and what I come to declare to you, the devil doesn't want us to believe in a rapture. And here's why. 
Because if we don't believe in a rapture, we get really relaxed. And then we, be, we begin to let up on our evangelism. We, we don't, we're not all that concerned about those who are not ready. But I have, found, I have found in churches when you begin to preach about the rapture and when people begin to get excited and when people begin to latch on to the fact that Jesus is coming for the church and He's coming for those that are ready, He's coming for those, only those that are prepared, that they begin to live differently and they begin to work for God more diligently and they have more zeal in what they're doing to try to win others to the Lord. Amen. I like to see people get excited about church. I like to see them get excited about the gospel. I like to see them get excited about what the Lord is doing, how God is moving, and I like to see that excitement build to the place that they it's a fire shut up inside of them that they can no longer contain. They cannot help but preach the word. Amen. I know sometimes people say, well, I'm not called to be a preacher. Yes, you are. We, Every one of us, we're called to proclaim the word of God. You may not be called to be a pulpit preacher. You may not be called to be a pastor and evangelist, but every person in this room tonight, you have a calling upon your life. Every believer has a calling to proclaim the word of God. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. And he, the Satan doesn't want us to believe in the rapture. He doesn't want us to think about eternal life. He doesn't want us to think, of, especially he doesn't want us to dwell on the fact that there's eternal punishment for the wicked. Amen. There's a term you don't hear in too many sermons anymore, eternal punishment for the wicked. But you know that's in the word of God. Amen. We got to keep warning the world. Amen. We, we can get angry. We can get angry at what we see happening in the world. We can get angry at those that are, are living, uh, living a life so far from the Word of God. We can turn our noses up at them. Or we can get concerned about them and say they don't know any better. Jesus prayed from the cross about the crucified, those who crucified Him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm telling you, this world is filled with people tonight that do not know what they're doing. They are convinced, they're convinced the Bible's outdated. They're convinced it's a fairy tale. They're convinced the church folks are crazy. And who is it that convinced them of that? The, de the devil. The devil convinced them of that. And the people in the world that the devil uses as his mouthpiece, they have helped convince them of that. But I'm here to tell you the rapture is a reality. It's going to happen one day. Can I have an amen on that? And who are the wicked? We talk about how the wicked, the Bible said the wicked will be turned into hell. Well, who are the wicked? Who are the wicked? It's important that we understand who the wicked are. The wicked are those who have never, it includes those who have never received Christ as Savior. It includes those who have never repented, that have never been born again. It also includes those who maybe at one time knew God and then have turned their backs on God. Amen. I've seen people that wholeheartedly serve God at a time. I, I've seen them. I've got relatives at one time that were in church, and they were praising God. They were speaking in tongues. They were running the aisle. I know they were genuinely saved. I see the power of God move on them. And then I've seen them, I seen them let go of that. I've see, I seen the, the, the enemy take, begin to take over their lives. And then I've seen some of them get mixed up in bad religion, in religion that looks to anything other than Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, we have to have Jesus in our life. The wicked includes those who have, not only those who have never been born again, but those who have fallen. Amen. I'm telling you, the devil would never get after us if there were no way for us to fall. The reason the devil messes with God's people is because he's trying to trip us up. He's, if he can't trip you up, if he can't get you by temptation, then he's going to try to get you bitter, angry, frustrated at God so that, so that you just give up on God. Amen. And that you stop looking for him. And he'll try to convince you that God is not real. He'll get you to turn your back on Him if you listen to the devil. But I don't believe that we've got a congregation full of people tonight that are not here to listen to the devil. Amen. We're not here to listen to Him. We're, we, we're not going to listen to Him. We don't have time to put up with Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan. Satan will have us throw it all out the window. He'll have us discard everything that we've been taught. But I come to tell you there's a day when He's going to get thrown around. Amen. Jesus is coming back. Why is He coming? Amen. I'm telling you, He's coming back to lift His church out of this world. Glory to God. The world's not too friendly to the church anymore. Have you noticed that? 
The world's not too friendly towards us. The world, this world's becoming an uncomfortable place for the church. The church is uh, becoming under greater, a greater uh, 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 persecution than ever before. And we may not have people throwing rocks and stones at us. We may not have people burning our churches down now. But I'm here to tell you, there is a, there's a hostile feeling from the world towards the church. And it's growing worse every day. And there's a hostility that is developing. But I want you to know, amen, God is taking it all into account. And, and there's people tonight that are trying to mistreat the church. And, and Jesus is saying, hey, the clock is ticking down. There's a date on the calendar of God when, when the fathers will look at the son and say, go get your children. Uh, go get the church and bring them home. And I'm convinced that that calendar, that we're almost to that day. That we're almost to that hour when Jesus is going to come. Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the Son of Man. But he's seated at the right hand of the Father, listening for the instructions from on high. And when the Father leans over and gives him the nod, he's going to step out on the clouds of glory and he's coming and we're going to be called up to meet him in the air. Come on, somebody shout amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a day coming where the church is going to be lifted out of this world. We're going to be lifted, we're going to be caught up. And, and, and when is that day coming? When Jesus ascend, this, uh, descends of the clouds. Glory to God. And what's Jesus going to do? Amen. He's coming back and the church is going to come back. There, when we go up in the rapture, and then after we've been in heaven for a while with the Lord, uh, then the Bible said that we're coming back with Jesus. He's coming back with ten thousands of His saints. Uh, and we're coming back to throw the devil out. We're coming back to get rid of him. He's gone. He's history. He's going to be cast in to the, into a pit. He's going to be bound in chains for a thousand years. Uh, the false prophet, uh, that false religion that he has started is going to be wiped out. Uh, the Antichrist uh, is go- and the terror that he has caused uh, is going to come to an end uh, and he's going to suffer an incredible defeat and Jesus Christ uh, is going to rule and reign and this will be his kingdom. Amen. God has a master plan. God has a master plan. You go back and look with me at verse 14. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also, even, uh, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. He can't bring them with Him if they're not there. But when the rapture takes place, when Jesus appears in the clouds of glory, The dead in Christ are coming with Him. Here's where we get lost sometimes. Because we know the Bible says the graves are going to give forth the dead. And then the Bible says they're coming back with Jesus. And I've had people say, Pastor, can you explain that? I can. Because the moment you draw your last breath here in this old mortal body, your spirit gets up out of this mortal body and takes flight. Amen? Your spirit does not linger in the grave. They do not bury the real you with that body. The body goes back to the dust of the ground, but the Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and our spirit goes to be... I'm telling you, it's immediate. It's, it's quicker than you can bat an eye. Our spirit is called up to meet the Lord in the... Hallelujah! It goes to be with the Lord. It goes to heaven, and there's coming a day when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory that our dead bodies are going to be resurrected out of the ground, and the Bible said that quicker than you can bat an eye. They're going to be changed in the moment, in the twin of an eye and, 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 they're, and they're going to have a glorified body and this mortal shall put on immortality my new bodies will never die amen my new body will never never age praise God amen Our eyes will never dim. Our hair will never fall out. Our hearing will never grow dull. Our teeth will never go missing. Uh, Amen. I'm telling you, I'm excited about that. Amen. I think we'll be able to eat off the Krispy Kreme buffet. (laughs) Amen. I I have to tell you, I know I shouldn't have been, but the other day I was eating a cup of Rocky Road ice cream. And I tell you, I thought, if this ain't proof there's a God in heaven, I don't know. I believe the Lord invented it. Amen. But I want you to know, 
our, we're going to, one day there's, there's going to be a rapture that takes place. God's master plan. His master plan. He said, I'm not going to leave you in that world to be beat up. I'm not going to leave my church, the ones who have been faithful. I'm not going to leave those that... I'm not going to leave those that have kept their lamps burning. They kept them full of oil. They kept them trimmed. They kept them burning. I'm not going to leave you to be beat up on by the Antichrist. I'm coming for you. And I'm going to take you out of that world. You've suffered. I'm telling you, we've been through enough. Hey, hey, we've, we've seen the loss of our loved ones. We've buried our loved ones. We've been through all kinds of stuff. We've had to put up with sickness. We've had to put up with diseases. We've had all kinds of things attack us and come against us. But I'm going to tell you, we don't have to face, we don't have to go through the stuff that the Antichrist is going to bring upon this world. God is going to spare us from it. Amen? That's the blessed hope. Glory to God. And in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet's going to sound. In the moment of the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be called up to meet the Lord. I'm telling you, that's fast. That's milliseconds. No, it's not seconds. It's millisecond. We're going to be gone. Amen? I'm telling you, boom, we're gone. Does that excite anybody tonight? Just that. I'm faster than you can snap your finger. Faster than you can bat your eye. What's this world going to do when millions of people disappear from the face of this earth? They're not going to be able to explain it. They're, they're not going to understand it. It's going to be like the worst sci-fi movie you've ever seen. Pilots are going to come out of... Uh, out of the cockpits of airplanes, drivers and 18-wheelers are going to disappear. Car drivers are disappearing. Daycare workers are going to go missing. Hosp uh, surgeons uh, are in the middle of surgery. They're going to disappear. I'm here to tell you, amen, this world is going to change drastically. It's going to change faster than you can bat the eye, and they won't even realize what's happened. I can see the headlines now. They're, they're trying to explain it. These And some of these liberal... I'll get myself in trouble. Some of these folks on the news are going to be trying to explain it away, and they can't. They don't know what to call it. I'm going to tell you, I know what to call it. Call it the rapture. Hey, these are those that have given their lives to Jesus Christ. They have been called up. You've talked about them. You've put them down. You've mocked them. But God has brought them out of this world. Glory to God. He has lifted them up out of this. I'm telling you, they did Jesus the same way. They ridiculed him. They mocked him. They spat on him. They crucified him. They lied on him. And Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And on the third day, God, the Father looked down and said, I'm going to raise him up. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus said, I will come back. Glory to God. He said, destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up again. I'm telling you, he came back to life of his own accord. In fact, when they thought he was dead, he was down in hell, delivering the captives. He led captivity captive. And what about Kashotora Mahaya? Hallelujah. I'm anxious to receive that glorified body. And that, oh, what the, Paul said, he said, I can't tell you exactly how we're going to be. He said, but one thing I do know, I know that when Jesus comes, we'll be like him. It's good enough for me. One thing I know about Jesus, when he came back after he, after he had risen from the dead, they knew who he was. I think our scars will be gone. Amen. I'll never forget one day I had my hair cut pretty, pretty short. My mother was sitting behind me in a van we had, and she began to tell Peggy how I got all those scars on the back of my head. This is when he didn't mind me right here, and he did this and he did that. I think our scars are going to disappear. I think our new glorified body is going to, not going to have any scars. But there's one over there that's going to have scars. Amen. There's one over there that's going to, be, and his name is Jesus. And I believe he's going to open his hands. I believe he's going to stick his foot out there and say, you see what they did to me? Amen. They tried to get me too. But I said, I, hey, I t I, they mocked me. They spat on me. They crucified me. They lied on me. But here I am. I have risen. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's going to be, he's like a magnet that swings down. And when he swings down, he picks up the righteous, uh, only the righteous. Uh, and we're called up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. When, I, when Peggy and I first got married, I worked at a foundry. Went to work at a foundry the week after we got married, in fact, where my dad worked. And I'll never forget they had a great big old magnet 
that would just sweep down and it would just gather everything there up. Well, almost everything. If there was anything aluminum, it would not pick it up. If it was glass, it would not pick it up. What I'm telling you, if it was uh, uh, tin, it would not pick it up. It, it, you know, it, it wouldn't pick up anything but pure steel or metal. And it would, that magnet would pick all that, I mean, block, engine box and stuff like that. It would take it over and throw it into this huge fire called a cubolo. And there that, uh, those old car engines and car bodies would melt down to liquid and it would process would start all over again. He remember that magnet would only pick up that, that that was meant to pick up. It left everything else behind. I've come to tell you that's the way it's going to happen in the rapture. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going to swing down like a mighty magnet and the saints of God are going up but the Bible declares that, that those that do not know Him will be left. I'm glad I know Jesus tonight. I'm glad I don't just know about Him. I'm glad I don't just know of Him. I'm glad I know Jesus. Hallelujah. I know Him as my Lord and my Savior. Thank God for that. Somebody shout Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All the saints are going to meet Jesus in the air. We're going to be caught up, amen, with a glorified body. When are we going to, when are we going to receive that glorified body? At that moment, we're caught up. Amen. At that moment, we're caught up. And, and the saints that have died, here's what Jesus was, what uh, Paul was saying. He said, don't worry about the ones who have died before you. God's not going to forget them. God hasn't forgot them. And what a lot of the people didn't understand was that those who had died before them, they were all those that died to persecution, had died uh, to to been killed by animals and killed in amphitheaters. Not they were already with the Lord, but they're waiting to come back and get their glorified body. Hallelujah! And we will be known as we're known. Come on, somebody shout Amen! Because the rapture, many are going to go missing. Look back at verse fifteen and sixteen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'm telling you, they're going to the buffet before we do. Amen. You, been, you know how we do it around here? A lot of times we have, uh, we have a meal. We say, hey, let's let our seniors go to the front of the line. I've got one or two that says, hey, don't forget me. Amen. Can I go first today? Sure. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I'm telling you, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. What God is saying is, you help. I'm telling you, He's talking about people that held on. Amen. How many remember that song, I held on? I held on till the storm was over. I held on while the devil was doing everything he could possibly. I held on. I just held on. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, God's going to honor those who held on. He's going to hold on to, he's going to, he's going to reward and honor those who held on to the very end and died a martyr or died in the faith. I'm here to tell you, some of them suffering from this and some of them suffering from that. The devil throwing everything, but the, including the kitchen sink at them. And the Lord is not going to forget them. They're having a place of honor. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then those which are alive and remain shall be called up behind them. There's going to be a meeting in the clouds. Hallelujah. God's coming back after the redeemed. I was going to say something. I don't know if I want to say it in the way I wrote it or not. I'm going to say this. This is not talking about this church, but the church at large, the church in general. God's not necessarily coming back after church members. He's not coming back after a segment of a denomination. He's not even coming back after a particular denomination. Amen. He's coming back after the redeemed. You can have your name over at the Baptist and here at the Church of God and over the Assemblies of God and anywhere else you want to have your name on the books. But I'm going to tell you, having your name on a church roll will not get you to heaven, but you've got to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Come on, somebody shout Amen. Hallelujah. 
And I just said that to you because some people feel like, hey, if I just get connected to the church, if I can just say I'm a member, I'm all right. No, you got to be changed. Amen. You got to be redeemed. You got to be blood bought. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to live for Him. And then the Bible says, hey, there's a meeting place that's going to take place. Where is that? Verse 17. Let's read it together again. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them where in the clouds. I've never been to a meeting in the clouds. I'm excited about that. Amen. How many, how many gets excited to go to a place you've never been to before? I've been in an airplane and I flew through some clouds, but I've got a feeling the cloud he's talking about is not like the cloud we flew through. Amen. I don't believe he's talking about those clouds that are just right above our heads. I don't believe he's talking about the clouds that touch the top of our mountains. I believe he's talking about Shekinah clouds. Jesus went up in a cloud, he's coming back in the cloud. Amen. He's, he went up in a Shekinah cloud, he's coming back in a Shekinah, he's coming back in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air. What a meeting. Oh, what a meeting. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to meet our dead loved ones that have been resurrected, that have been wrapped and resurrected from the dead. We're going to meet them in the air. Hallelujah. Called up to meet them in the air. What a meeting that's going to be. You know what? I don't know, I don't know how visible all this is going to be to the natural eye. And it's, and it's going to happen so fast it really won't matter. There's a part of me that'd like to be standing next to a graveyard down in Montford, Alabama. I better stop right there. Hallelujah. But I've come to tell you it's going to happen so fast it really won't matter. Because I, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a millisecond, that's fast, friends. But faster than you can snap your... We're going to be caught up. It's not going to take him long to resurrect the dead. And we're going to be caught up with him to meet him. And I'm telling you, it's going to be faster than you can even think about it. And we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be the Lord. There are many promises concerning the rapture. And Hebrews chapter 10 20, and verse 23. The Bible said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Don't ever waver about the rapture. Don't ever waver about the fact He's coming back for us. Don't ever waver about the fact that we must be redeemed. Don't ever waver about the fact that we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't ever waver about the fact, amen, that God is everything the Word of God proclaims Him to be. Come on. Let's read that again. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful. He is faithful that promised. Hallelujah. He is faithful. If he said he's coming back, he's coming back. And guess what Jesus said? Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you that where I go, there you may be also. And if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you, Jesus will keep his word. He is faithful to his word. Anybody believe what I'm saying tonight? Hallelujah. He's, now, how do we know that? How do we know the Word says it? Well, Jesus said to Himself, I will come again and receive you to Myself. The Scripture said He would return. The angel on the day of His ascension, the day Jesus ascended into heaven, the angel said, don't just stand here gazing because the one you've seen leave, He's coming back just like He left. He went up in a cloud, He's coming back in a cloud. Hallelujah. The angel proclaimed it. The Word proclaims it. Jesus proclaimed it. And the saints of old have proclaimed it for the, for throughout the centuries. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is coming back. And the message is plain. Everybody here, everybody you know, everybody in this world, they have an opportunity to get ready for the rapture. Amen. The Bible said it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. I'm telling you, not one man, not one woman, not one young person was created and put in this world to go to a devil's hell. Come on, how many believe that? Nobody has to go to hell. Nobody. And if somebody comes along teaching you anything else, just get away from it quickly as you can. Because I'm here to tell you, we serve a mighty God who doesn't want to see anybody dying. Only those, the only ones who are going to hell are those who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
that reject him as Lord, that chase after false religions, amen? How, what, how, do you, how, do you, how can we be ready for the rapture? First of all, sinners, if they want to be ready, they have to repent. The word repent means to have a t complete turnaround. It's not just to be sorry for what you've done. It's to say, Lord, change me. Change me. I don't want to do that that's wrong. I don't want to sin against you anymore. Turn me into somebody else. Hallelujah. Sinners must repent. We must receive Christ as Savior. Backsliders, they've got to come back to God and be renewed and restored. Hallelujah. How many know I'm telling the truth? There's power behind the rapture. The power and the same power that's behind the rapture is behind our transformation that takes place when we are converted. Oh, thank God for powerful testimonies. Thank God for those people that one time were steeped in sin. But Jesus came along and set them free and He changed their lives. And oh, what a living testimony they became because they're no longer alcoholics, no longer drug addicts, amen, no, no longer sex addicts. They have been set free. They have been delivered. They don't lie anymore. They don't steal anymore. They don't commit adultery anymore. Why? Because they've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. They're not used, out there using filthy language anymore because they've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus has, has burned the chains of sin off of them. Does it mean that we're perfect? We Sometimes despite ourselves, we fail. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen? Hallelujah. But the power behind that. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. I'm trying to hurry. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. But you are not in the flesh, be ye, or, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Dead men don't sin. Amen. And what the Apostle Paul was saying to the Romans, he said, if you've crucified your flesh, that's, I believe it was Paul that said, I die daily. Well, he said, I've, every day I come back to the cross. Every day I return to the altar. Sometimes every day throughout the day. When temptation comes, when Satan comes knocking, I have, to, I have to die again to the old man. My flesh is dead, but my spirit is alive. What he said is, I have crucified my flesh so that my flesh will not rule and dictate my life, but my spirit man is more alive than my flesh, and the one who's more alive is controlling and ruling my life. Hallelujah. Does that make sense tonight? Praise God. Thank God for that transforming power. That same transforming power is a translating power. That magnet that sweeps down and catches us away. Amen. It's a triumphant power that causes us to triumph over Satan, over the powers of hell. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, amen, when that trumpet sounds, nothing is going to hold me here. I'm headed home. Glory to God. I said nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Glory to God. Aren't you thankful that when the trumpet of God sounds, as much as the world would like to say it's not so, as much as many times as the world has said you can't believe it, it's all, it's all a fantasy. I'm going to tell you, when the trumpet sounds, nothing here can hold me. Hold me here. I'm headed home. Hallelujah. And what a parade we're going to have. I hear lately, some people don't like parades. I'm telling you, we're about to have a parade. Jesus is going to appear in the clouds of glory. The dead in Christ are going to rise to meet Him in the air. The dead in, and then, then those who are alive and remain are going to be caught. I'm talking about a parade. And it doesn't stop there. I think when Jesus gets us all gathered together, He's going to say, come on, follow me. i got something to show you. <laughs> amen. And I think when we begin to go up, amen, this, this old earth is going to begin to, uh, to get dimmer and dimmer. 
and, and, and it's going to get smaller and smaller until all of a sudden this old world has disappeared from our sight. And the next thing we know, there's another world coming into view. Glory to Shatahaya. This old earth can no longer be seen. But there's something over there to the north that's glowing. There's something over there that's adorned as a bride waiting for her groom. And we're going to approach that brand new city and we're going to be with the Lord. There's going to be another, there's going to be a, the parade continues because that parade goes through the, through the gates of pearl. That parade travels down the streets of gold. That parade passes by the river of life, looks at the tree of li- trees of life. That parade keeps on going until all of a sudden it stops before the throne of the Almighty God and we begin to stare at the throne of God and say, that's where my prayers have been answered. That's where when I cried out as a sinner, grace came, grace came from flowing from the throne of God and met me at the altar. That's the place when I was sick in body and the doctor said I was dying. All of a sudden there's something happened on the throne of God and God said live and I have been alive ever since. Amen. We're going to stare at that throne and say, oh, when, when they counted me out, when, when the lawyer said I couldn't win, he met God on the throne overrules the judges of the earth and he sent me a mighty victory glory to God amen oh when the, when the, when the doctor in the operating room said it's too far gone somebody sitting on the throne right there amen said you're not going to die this way I'm sending healing and I'm going to add to your life it came from right there on that very throne hallelujah amen. when the demons of hell were camped out around my children thinking they were going to take them down. And I began to lift up my children in prayer. Those prayers are sitting right there to the throne. And the one seated on that throne said, No, devil, you cannot have his children. I'm going to redeem them and save them, and you're not getting them. Hallelujah. Oh, you talk about, you talk about a celebration. But the parade don't end there. We take a break for a while. I think we enjoy the sights and the splendors of heaven. And at the end of seven years, we're going to get up on a white horse. <laughs> I like horses. And I got to feed them with my new glorified body. I'll be able to get on one <laughs> without getting on a ladder. My only experience at riding a horse, I tried to get on the saddle and went like that. And, and a little old teenage girl said, Sir, would you like to bring, me, bring you some steps to get up there? Would you like to bring me some steps to get up there? <laughs> but I found out the other day, John Wayne, Always use steps to get on his horse. But I got to feed him with my new glorified body. I'm going to run over there, jump up on that white horse, and Jesus is going to head this parade, and we're coming back to earth. And I'm here to tell you, there's going to be a war that's going to be the shortest war in the history. It's going to be the biggest, but yet shortest war in the history of this world. World War III is going to end. Glory to God. Because Jesus is going to get a hold of the devil and the false prophet, the false religious system, and the Antichrist, and he's going to wipe them out. And I'm here to tell you, this world is going to be renewed. And we're going to be... Marching down there, there's going to be a military parade. Jesus is at the head of the line riding a white horse, holding the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? All Jesus has to do is say, you're defeated, devil. And it's over. Would you stand with me? Amen. If I was brave enough to sing, I'd take off on that old song, I'll see you in the rapture. Every redeemed person here tonight can sing it. I'll see you in the rapture. But there's a part of me that my heart, there's a part of my heart that breaks tonight. Because I got loved ones I know are not ready. I, in a way, in a way I, I want to go to heaven. It would please me if he came right this moment but also know I've got loved ones that aren't ready. 
what do we do about them? We begin, and I'm sure you already have been. We got to keep bringing them back to the altar. Bringing them back to the altar. If you're here tonight, you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I want to give you this opportunity to come. Hallelujah. If you don't know Him as your Savior, or maybe you're away from Him, these altars are open. I, I, you know, this is not just something I say at every altar call, just to be saying it. I don't say it for my health. I say it because God wants to redeem the lost. God wants to restore the backslider. And tonight, if, you don't, if, you know, if you're unsure, if you're unsure if you're ready for the rapture to take place, you need to come. The Bible declares that He's coming back in an hour when you think not. Those folks, when Noah preached that the rain was coming, they laughed at him, they mocked him. Foolish old man, it's never rain. What are you talking about? But the day the skies opened up and the ground opened up and water began to flow from beneath and from above and the water began to ascend and guess what God had already done for Noah and his family? He had already sealed them in the dark. People, the people didn't get really concerned. They, they just, uh, the Bible said they were just carrying on life as usual until they realized the rain was falling and the ground was giving up water and they went to knock on the door of the ark. That foolish old man was in there. And God has shut the door and Noah couldn't open it. I tell you, when God shuts the door of the church age, it cannot be opened again. This is your time. This is your time. If there's one that needs to pray. Hallelujah. We're going to take just a few moments. And then we're going to change order of service. We're going to our baptismal service. But if you're here tonight and you need to come to this altar, I want you to come. In the name of Jesus. God, help people to move. Help us to be obedient to you. If God, if there's one lost person here tonight, if there's one backslider in this house, draw them to this altar right now. Brother Robert needs healing tonight. I saw him holding his head just a few minutes ago. He's got a serious migraine headache. I want some of you brethren to come. We know that God's going to heal him tonight. We're believing for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're go we're gonna this is your grandbaby. We're going to anoint Sister Shirley on, half, her, on behalf of her grandbaby, three years old. They're saying some veins are possibly twisted, and, and she could possibly have to have, what is this? Two aneurysms may have to have open heart surgery. This would be like the third or fourth heart surgery.
for a three-year-old. Hey, how many are going to believe with me? Come ahead. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to anoint this grandmother, and we're going to see this grandbaby healed. Hallelujah. I want you to pray like this was your baby, like it was your grandbaby. Let's pray that. Pray like that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we lift up Maddie to you right now. We anoint this grandmother, God, on her behalf, and we know that by Jesus' stripes she is healed. Lord, the devil cannot have his way here. Lord, we've seen you heal. We've seen you do miracles many, many times. And we're believing that right now, in the name of Jesus, that Maddie is healed. We believe right now, Father, by Jesus' stripes she is made whole. God, I glorify you. I praise you right now. God, you're moving in her heart. God, you're moving right down inside her heart. God, you're taking those blood vessels that are twisted and you are beginning to straighten them right now. They are straight as straight can be. They are made. There is no blockage. There is no restriction. There is no more aneurysm. There is no more danger of them bursting. Father, she is healed right now. Healed and made whole right now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we praise you right now. We glorify you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What are we going to sing when we get the praise report? What are we going to say when we get the praise? I think we're going to use this word right here. The highest form of praise. Said the same in every language in the world. Hallelujah. Praise Him like you know these prayers are already answered. Amen. This mother stand on behalf of her son. God knows the need tonight. Hold that by Lord, over blame. I plead the blood. able to send the right one. Yes, he can. Amen. We're going to anoint him on behalf of his brother Robert that needs salvation. Been blinded by the enemy. Amen. Talks harsh about the things of God. But we know God can wake him up. 
Father, we anoint Brother Beal right now. God, on behalf of that Brother Robert, God, he needs salvation. He needs salvation. God, he needs the skills of God. I want everybody that's thinking about lost loved ones right now, with those loved ones in your mind, with them upon your heart, I want you to lift up your hands on their behalf. And I want you to begin to intercede. And we're going to pray as a group tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we don't want to see these loved ones die and go to hell. And we know that not a one of them have to do that. Father, we intercede on behalf of lost children, lost grandchildren. We intercede on behalf of lost parents. We intercede on behalf, God, of, Lord, of friends and other relatives, Lord, that do not know you. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We pray for scales to fall off of their eyes. We pray for them to wake up right now like the prodigal to come to themselves and realize where they are and how they can leave that place where they're lost and, and to return unto the Lord. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost, God, get a hold of their heart and reel them in. Draw them to repentance, God. Draw them to the altar so that their lives can be changed forevermore. Father, we're believing as a church. We are believing as one body for the salvation of all those represented by uplifted hands. In the name of Jesus, let one after the other. God, let one after the other come to you. Let praise reports begin to flow in. Lord, of where your Holy Ghost power has moved and convicted and drawn people to the altar. God, we praise you right now. We praise you right now, Jesus. Listen to me just a moment. I, I heard a very disturbing thing on the news the other day. They were talking about China. And they were talking about Russia. They were talking about other nations, especially, especially these two, China and Russia. How that they're trying to take this nation over. How? By sending tons and tons of drugs across our borders and into this land. By getting our young people, our youth, and our, our young folks hooked on this stuff. They know that if they can, if they can overcome us with, this, with these addictions, that they can destroy this nation and take it without a fight. Amen? And the thing that they've got on their mind is they will pour so much money and so many drugs across the borders of this nation until they finally bring us to ruin. But I'm here to tell you, I know a God that sets the captives free. Amen? And as, Oh, hallelujah. As long as the church is here, they can't do just anything. They can't get by with it. Amen? When God takes the church out, it's going to be a different story. But there's a restraining force that's here now. Because why? Because some prayer warriors are praying against it. And praying for souls to be saved. Hallelujah. That's the only thing that keeps the devil from taking over control. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. we got to keep praying. we got a big job to do. Amen? As long as mamas and papas and Sunday school teachers are still here praying, I'm telling you, hell cannot get its way. They may win, win in some cases, but they don't win in all of them. Amen? And it doesn't have, they don't have, dev, the devil doesn't have to win with your children and your grandchildren. I'm convinced of that. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Anybody feel like praising Him? Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus.
I want Leslie and uh, Larry to come, if they will. What a beautiful thing to see God move in people's lives like He's moving in Leslie and Larry's life. Boy, a few weeks ago, He blessed us by singing a song God laid in His, put in His heart. Amen. They're here tonight to be baptized in water. Next week, they're going to join the church. Amen. And I want us to pray over them tonight. Amen. Stretch your hands towards them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful, God, for what you've done in Leslie's life, in Larry's life. Lord, it's a work that's still in progress as it is with all of us. Father, you are taking us from glory to glory. You are moving in their lives. You're moving in our lives. What people see today is not what they're going to see tomorrow. Father, we are a work in progress. We're, we are a building under construction. And I give you praise right now, Lord, for what you have done and what you're about to do. The renovation is still in the process. And God, what a beautiful thing that you've already done. And oh, how beautiful it's going to be when you're completed. When it's completed, Father, I give you glory right now. I give you glory right now, God, for your mighty power that's flowing in Larry's life, in his heart, God, in Leslie's life and heart. Lord, I glorify you right now. And I praise you tonight that they present themselves this church to be baptized in water. God, we give you the glory. God, what a testimony. What a testimony. the screen but you guys already know this song we can look what the Lord has done not only in their life but in all of our lives as well we can all testify to that amen well look what the Lord has done look what the Lord has done well he healed my body he, he took my mind and he saved me and it was just chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope, no peace of mind. My sins, they were as scarlet. He was Darkness and sin. 
Amen. Glory to God. I'm, they may still be getting ready. But I was there they are. by the chain of darkness and sin. I have no hope, no peace of mind. My sins, they were as parted. He wants to fight so long. He opened up my life. because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I, it, I take great pleasure in baptizing you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. If you'll stand just a little bit closer this way, okay? All right, ready? God. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> Lord, give me strength. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Proud of Larry. Praise God. Larry, uh, in just a moment, I'm just having you grip you, uh, just kind of pinch I mean, your nose on your Yeah. yeah <laughs> <you're not. laughs> But Larry, it's a great pleasure tonight to, because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. I now baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Praise God. Isn't that exciting? Amen. I tell you what, I, uh, one of these days, I hope we get we start baptizing so many people we can uh, we can just justify putting them with them new baptistries back here. Yeah. If I didn't have to get wet, boy, I'd be bad. I'd, I'd want to baptize them every week. Amen. <laughs> every service, praise God. But we're we're so thankful what God is doing in our church, and you pray, for, continue to pray for uh, Brother Larry and Sister Leslie, as as like all of us, as they continue to grow in the Lord and mature in Him. And God's doing tremendous work. He'll keep doing it. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget service Wednesday night. We're looking for a mighty, mighty move of the Holy Spirit. God, well, He moved so greatly this past Wednesday. And we've been teaching out of the book of Acts. If the Lord doesn't change the plan, we're going to continue to do that uh, uh, this Wednesday. And we, and we just look for a, a great time in God. Amen. And, uh, uh, be, and right now, it's not too early to be praying about our services next weekend. That uh, we'll see a mighty, mighty move of God. See souls saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, healings, uh, needs met, miracles happen. Amen? Amen? Praise God. If we don't pray, it may not happen. But things happen when we pray. And I know we got some folks praying. Amen. Keep doing it. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can stand to your feet for our dismissal. Hallelujah. What a great time we've had the Lord tonight. And I hope you'll take the words that you've heard tonight, take them home with you, share them with somebody. Hallelujah. Get the CD. If you, I, I, Kevin, I, he may have shut everything down back there now. Might not be able to do it tonight, but he could in the near future have you a CD of this service ready as well as this morning's. Uh, or just point them towards live stream or Facebook live and say, hey, go watch it. Go watch the service and, and uh, hear the word of God. Amen. And uh, God will bless them. If you'll bow your heads for a closing prayer. Sister Lisa, would you dismiss us in prayer?
occupying, Lord, until you come, Lord, telling people the good news, Lord, for we know that it's not your will, that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance, Lord. We believe, Lord, that we're going to see more souls come in to the kingdom, God. We pray that you'd go with us, Lord, as we go to our separate homes, God, that you would be with us, Lord, and help us to let our light shine, Lord, and bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.